Hey, Kipsters. Welcome back. I'm so excited to see you guys, and I'm so excited to talk about one of my absolute favorite things in science, Punnett squares. The objective is that Kipsters will be able to predict the outcome of inherited traits based on Punnett squares. Let's get started. Punnett, Punnett squares predict the likelihood of traits. So in the picture that you see here, this is actually an example of a Punnett square. This whole thing here is what geneticists or people who study heredity use to tell what the likelihood that a child would have a certain hair color or a certain eye color or how tall or short that that person would be. So from the Punnett square, I could see that this person would have a 50% chance of having blue eyes and a 50% chance of having brown eyes. By the end of the lesson today, you will be able to predict the likelihood of traits of offspring of two parents. But why is it so important? So this is my mom and my dad here and my sister and I. Um, and you can clearly see here that some of the traits or some of the characteristics that my mom and dad have have clearly been passed on to us. And so even before my parents had me, if they used a Punnett square, they would have been able to tell what my nose shape would be, what my eyebrow shape would be, even what my eye color and hair color was before they even had me. And that's because they could use a Punnett square. So, Inherited traits like hair color, your shape of your eyebrows, nose shape, eye color, those things come directly from your parents and are passed on to you. And then you will pass on those traits to your children. So in this lesson, we're going to study how do we figure out what the traits are going to be for the offspring. To complete a Punnett square, there are five steps. Step one is to write the genotypes of the parent on the top and left-hand side of the box and I mean this box here. There's one on your paper too. So in this example, brown hair, uppercase B, is dominant to black hair, lowercase b. The brown hair girl has a big B, little b, and then the um, boy that has black hair has a recessive trait of two lowercase b's. So my first step is to write the genotype on the top and left-hand side. So I'll take the big B, put it on the top, and then I will take the genotype of the father and put it on the left-hand side. I have completed step one. Now it's time to move to step two. Step two is to drop the tops and slide the sides. What I mean is that you drop these top letters down. So take that big B and drop it all the way down. Drop it one more into the box. Take the small one, drop it down. <clears throat> And then you slide the sides. You're always going to slide to the right. So you can see in this example, I'm sliding these all to the right so that all the boxes are completely filled out with two letters. Now I'm going to count how many of each genotype I have inside the Punnett square. So I can see here that I have two uppercase B, lowercase b genotypes and two lowercase, lowercase genotypes. So big B, little b, there's two of those, and then little b, little b, there's two of those. My next step, step four, is to determine the phenotype, meaning what is the actual appearance. I remember back that brown hair, big B, is dominant to black hair, which is lowercase b, so there's two that have brown hair, these two have brown hair, and there's two that have black hair, which are these two. Little b, little b, there's two of those. My next step is to create a fraction and a percent. So two out of the four, two out of the four, so two of these out of all four have brown hair, and two out of four have black hair. So you have a 50% chance of having brown hair and a 50% chance of having black hair if you were born to these two parents. Let's take a look at another example. So for this practice, I'm going to have you to try it and then you will watch as I do it. So in example one, tall is a capital T is dominant to short, lowercase t. 
mom has a genotype of uppercase T, uppercase T, and dad has a genotype of lowercase T, lowercase T. Go ahead and try this one on your own. Then when you're ready, click the next button. Okay, so let's take a look. So tall is dominant to short, and I know my first step is that I have to put the genotypes on the top and on the side. So I go ahead and put the first genotype here, second genotype there. I know now I need to drop the tops and slide the sides. So I drop this down, put this across, gives me overcase T, drop this down, put this across, and then again, drop it down, put this across. There we go. So what I see is that I need to count the genotype. Well, I have four uppercase T, lowercase T, all four of them. And I convert that to a percent. Four out of four is, well, 100%. And so 100% have the chance of being tall. Because we remember that T, uppercase T, tall, is dominant. So they have a 100% chance of being tall. Let's try one more. One cat is long-haired and mates with a short-haired cat. Use a Punnett square to determine the probability of having long hair. Go ahead and try this on your paper now. You should have set up your um, Punnett square to look like this. The parent should go on the top and on the left-hand side. Your answers should be like this inside the box with the genotypes. And then you should have figured out here, there's two that are LL and two that are lowercase, lowercase, which means that I have two that are going to have long hair, and then I have two that are going to have short hair. If I convert that to a percent, two out of four is the same thing as 50%, and then two out of four again is the same thing as 50%. So they have a 50% chance of having long hair, and the cats have a 50% chance of having short hair. You guys are going to continue on to your practice that you see on your paper. Refer back to the steps in order to complete the Punnett squares. Give me a call if you need any help. I'll also be around.